ディズニーモンスターシンクディズニーモンスターシンクオールチュードレンノーダッドナイトタイムイズウェンモンスターズヴィジットフェンスルーディアクローゼットドアーズ What they don't know is that the monsters are just doing their job, collecting children's screams, which provide power to their monster world. The monsters worked for Mr. w a t e r n e w s president of Monsters Incorporated, the largest scream processing factory in the monster world. James P. Sullivan, the number one scarer at Monsters Inc., and his assistant Mike Wozworski always collected the most screams. Being a scarer was a dangerous job. Never let a kid through one of our doors. Contact with the children is deadly, Mr. w a t e r n e w s warned. New recruits. Since there was a scream shortage, Mike and Sally walked through Monstropolis to walk. Mike went to see Rose, the slag like monster dispatcher at MI, who scolded him for forgetting to file his paperwork. Before making his way to the skier of Rover, as he and the other assistants ordered up the closet doors, the skiers entered the skier of Rover. Randall, who wasn't a very nice monster, wanted to beat Sally and become the top skier. <coughs> May the best monster win, said Sally. I plan to, said Randall, spitefully. The monsters raced in and out of children's rooms, scaring kids and collecting screams. <coughs> Emergency, we have a 2319, cried the floor manager. As a monster returned with a child's sock on its back, a child's position was nearly as deadly to monsters as the child itself. The scare of l o r e had to be shut down and decontaminated by the Child Detection Agency, the CDA. With a walk over for the day, Mike went to meet his girlfriend Celia, the company's beautiful receptionist. He was taking her for dinner to celebrate her birthday, but he'd forgotten to file his paperwork. Sally offered to do it for him and went back to the scare of l o w e r He found the child's door in a station. And while he's trying to investigate, let in a human girl. After several failed attempts to return the toxic kid, Sally hid her inside a sports bag. Then he went to find Mike, who was on his date with Celia. But suddenly, the child escaped. Scaring all the monsters in the restaurant. As agents from the CDA swarmed overhead in helicopters, Sally and Mike grabbed, grabbed the girl and escaped to their flat. Inside, Mike tripped and fell. The little girl giggled, making all the lights flash brightly and then go out. This puzzled Sally. <clears throat> Next morning, Sally decided 
it would be best to try and put the girl back through her door again. Dressing her in a monster disguise, he and Mike took her with them to walk. The monster's ink lobby was crawling with CDA agents because they had found Sally's sports bag at the restaurant. While Mike tried to find the key to her door, Sally and the girl played hide and seek. Boo! she giggled, running off. Just as Mike returned to Sally and the Boo, as Sally had decided to call her, Randall and his assistant arrived. See, whispered Sally, as they hid just in time. When I find whoever let that girl, that kid out, muttered Randall creepily. This is very bad, said Mike, as he and Sally just managed to get the boo onto the scarer floor without being seen. But once again, Boo escaped, and Sally rushed off to look for her. As Mike tried to apologize to Celia for running her evening, Randall lurked nearby. Overhearing that, they had been in the same restaurant as the child. Randall exploded. Where's the kid? It's here in the factory, isn't it? He growled. Under threat, under, under threat, Mike admitted everything. <clears throat> Offering to make sure that Boo's door would be open, Randall told Mike to return her while the scare of lower words empty at lunchtime. Finding Boo with some little monsters in the company, Krish, Sally and Mike headed back to the scare of lower, but Sally didn't trust Randall. Frustrated, Mike opened Boo's door and went through it and into her room to prove everything was safe. He jumped on the bed, pretending to be Boo sudden to Boo. Suddenly he was trapped inside a box. Hiding with Boo, Sally watched as Randall left the room, carrying the box with Mike inside it. Sally and Boo followed them into a secret laboratory. Randall strapped Mike to a terrible machine made to extract street screams from children. Sally secretly unplugged the machine and rescued Mike. Then they ran to find Water News. But as they were trying to tell Mr. Water News what had happened, he grabbed a boo, opened a door, and pushed Mike and Sally through it. Water news was in on Randall's plan. Water news had banished them to the human world. Mike and Sally found themselves on a snowy mountain with the abom abominable snowman, the Yeti. <clears throat> When the Yeti told them about the nearby village, Sally had an idea. He made a sledge out of bits and the pieces he found in the Yeti's cave. When Mike refused to go with him, Sally sped down the mountain alone, charging into a child's bedroom and through their closet door. Sally entered the monster was and raced towards Randall's secret lab, where he found a boo strapped to the machine. Watched by a stand, Randall and Wotanus, Sari ripped the machine apart and rescued Boo. Luckily, Mike had decided to follow his older friend, after all, and helped them to escape. 
running to the scare of lower. Mike explained to Celia what had been happening. While Celia caused a distraction, Mike and Sally found the booth's door, but Randall was close behind. Randall grabbed the boo and then tried to loosen Sally's grip on the door so he would fall. Suddenly, Boo pulled Randall's head back. Then, Sally threw Randall through an open door and shredded it so that he could never return. With a look of pride, Sally lifted Boo up into the air and laughed. You did it, Boo. You beat him. Now, it was time to escape from water news. I'd kidnapped a thousand children before I let this company die, he gasped. The CDA, who had heard everything, arrested water news, then announced the arrival of their boss, who turned out to be Rose. She had been working and working as an undercover agent for the CDA all along. Rose gave Mike and Sally five minutes to say goodbye to Boo. Then she would be sent home and her door would be shredded so no monster could ever enter her room again. Later, when Sally explained to everyone how Boo's laughter created more power than her screams, Monsters Inc. was turned into a laughter factory. He was made the president and the profit sword. Sally still missed Boo. In fact, he was thinking about her when Mike arrived with a surprise for him. Mike had been busy reconstructing Boo's shredded door, putting the final piece in place. Sally walked into the room to find Boo waiting with a big smile. At last, they were reunited.